Congressman, uh, Majority Leader of the Republicans in the House, Steve Scalise. First of all, it's great to see you again. It's been a while. You look well, sir. Thank you for coming on. Always great to be with you, Larry, even in these crazy times. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Um, Mr. Majority Leader, you have to stop this $10 billion in unfrozen assets that will go to Iran. You have to stop it, sir. Yeah, this is crazy. It's insanity. And in fact, Thursday of this week, Larry, we're going to have a vote on the House floor to block the $6 billion mm. in transfers that Joe Biden wants to send uh, to Iran in that hostage swap. And as you talked about earlier, think about this. Iran is the largest state sponsor of terrorism. They are the funder of Hamas. If you want to support Israel in their war against Hamas, which we're all in for, why would you dare give Iran a dime, let alone $6 billion, $10 billion, these sanctions being eased? That money is going to end up straight in the hands of the Ayatollah. Go back to the 60 Minutes interview just a few weeks ago. The Ayatollah made it very clear. Whatever money he gets, he's going to use for whatever purposes he wants, including funding terrorism. Why would you give him a dime? We need to cut off oil exports. Right now, they're allowing – it's easier to produce and, and send oil made in Iran around the world than to make it in America. Biden is making it harder to produce energy in America. We talk about this all the time. That's why we need H.R. 1. But energy production in America is harder than making energy in Iran because of Biden's policies. That emboldens Iran and gives them more money to fund terrorism. This is insanity. Steve Scalise, on that $6 billion vote, I wasn't aware of it. Can you amend it, put the $10 billion in there, too? Do a whole, you know, wrap it up in the $10 billion, $16 billion? I mean, I, I think you have to make a point, because the Bidens are playing fast and loose with the truth, and they're actually helping our enemy, which is Iran. Is there something you can do on the floor to amend this uh, to include $16 billion? By the way, I would say put the sanctions in, too, because they're letting that go, and China imports of oil right. is financing this damn war. But just on these frozen and unfrozen assets, is there something you can do to bundle the two together? Right. We passed sanctions a couple of weeks ago, but on this vote coming up Thursday, uh, we just found out this morning about the $10 billion in these sanctions. So yeah. obviously we're looking at that. But we had already passed last week out of committee the bill on the $6 billion. And that's money that this President Biden negotiated months ago on a hostage swap that everybody said was a horrible deal. Again, this was before the, uh, the, the attacks on Israel. Uh, where Biden was already playing footsie with Iran. And then after the attacks on Israel, everybody said you shouldn't give them the money. And then Biden still is reluctant to do it. Watch the vote on this. I think all of America is going to be watching this vote. The Democrats in committee were split on this vote. Mm. Every single Republican and Democrat should vote for this bill to say Iran shouldn't get any money when they're using that money not only to fund terrorism against Israel, but against American troops as well. Uh, so we're going to have a vote on the House floor Thursday. We'll look at the $10 billion. That just popped yeah. up today. But yeah. the $6 billion is going to be coming up for a vote Thursday on well, the Well, I think floor. you're going to – I mean, today's Tuesday. I think by Thursday you're going to want to bundle them both together. I think America's going to be outraged when they hear this. Absolutely outraged. 1,400 yep. people killed, and we are unfreezing assets to give to Iran. And by the way, it's a lie. The State Department's box is completely wrong. It has nothing to do with food and medicine. This goes back to Iraqi nope. electricity, it's all oil fungible. and gas. All right. It's all just a lot of crap. I mean, they will not tell the truth about anything. Last one, Steve Scalise. Uh, Speaker Mike Johnson, he's got a, I'm going to call it a semi-clever plan, two steps continuing resolution. I don't, I don't want, I want it's semi-clever. Okay. My question to you, sir, is, is it going to pass and will, will we avoid a government shutdown? It's going to pass. And, and the biggest thing on this, Larry, is that it breaks this paradigm where we always get these Christmas Eve omnibus bills. I hate omnibus bills. Nobody reads them. They're dumped 3,000 pages the night before the vote. Uh, and it, it's got all kind of garbage in it. And those of us who vote against it, it doesn't matter because the bills pass. And it's got all kind of things you find out later about it. But we've got to stop this cycle. And so what the speaker did is negotiate pushing it into January. Let's have a fight over border security in January, and in the meantime, start working on more of these appropriations bills uh, that we have already passed through the House that control spending, that address some of the radical regulations that the Biden administration has imposed on the country that are crushing jobs, raising costs on families. So let's have that negotiation in the meantime 
And then in January, we're going to have a fight over getting our border secure, which needs to happen. Yes, sir. Steve Scalise, uh, God bless. You look great. You sound great. Thank you ever so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it, sir. Bless you. Good being with you, Larry, as always.